I, I don't know how much people know about our what our partnership really is. So you know, we call, talk about being a mission partner, which we are. But um, you know, the fact that we, you know, Landon is like you kind of talked about, Dan. Landon's kind of doing working, doing work for both both groups at the same time. Sometimes uh, Young Life and uh, First Pres. Uh, so the church does support Young Life financially and. And part of that is uh, with Landon coming on as youth pastor. And so he's kind of works some for Young Life, some for the church. And a lot of times it's kind of combined. You know, when you go to a you go to a game or you're, you know, leading the weight room, it's, you know, you're representing both groups as far as uh, I think we both understand. So it's kind of a cool job. But maybe talk a little bit about how Landon, how that's, or whoever, Dan or Landon, however that kind of works and how it's been working and that partnership that we have. And expand on that a little bit and how what the experience has been like dan do you want to go do you want me to go i feel like you're the one living it um you know like <laughs> J- jason and i live it from the outsides kind of looking in but i i think maybe you could tell folks kind of like how that's been and then maybe jason and i can fill in well, yeah, I, what maybe, we think. maybe first dan what else i'll just let people know how you and I know each other, how it all started. I'm trying to think we're, I'm coming on uh, 10 years that I've, my wife and I and our, our kids have lived here and, you know, Northwest Ohio, we moved up from Springfield, Ohio. I always tell people not your Springfield, but ours. So down around the Dayton area, um, we moved here to kind of take over uh, Young Life. And one of the first people that in Young Life that kind of caught wind that I was moving up here said, hey, I've, I've got this friend that's a pastor of a church. You should reach out to him. He's very familiar with Young Life. He's a great guy. He'd be just, if nothing else, a good friend for you to make when you, you know, move there. So uh, met Clint not too long after we moved here and we started meeting just to hang out and he's kind of giving me a history of Northwest Ohio from a, an outsider's perspective, you know, him still at that point being relatively new. And um, then I, it wasn't long after that, I think Jason, that we met each other and I think started getting coffee. And then for some reason, you and Clint invited me to come to, you know, some of the mommy people that worked with kids and mommy. And I started going to those things and hanging out. And if nothing else, it was, a great chance to to meet you guys and to meet other men that were following Jesus and uh, in full time ministry and trying to figure out how you do that and how you be a good husband and so yeah we just became friends and I think it was your kind of first exposure to what we do in Young Life and it wasn't long after we met you're like well I was saying you're kind of already doing a lot of these things you're already hanging out with kids and you're like well. All right, then I guess I'm a young life leader. Then uh, I filled out the forms. Yep, <laughs> made it official, and then I filled out the forms and got a passcode or password to the site. So yeah, and then you, yeah. but you, I mean, have been nothing but, um, you know, a bridge builder. I feel like for the local church, uh, I mean, really, it's building a bridge between people and Jesus. Like you've been there to. All right, do you need me to drive referees? Yeah, yeah. You know, from the football games over to the locker yeah. room. Well, if that's what it takes to serve my community and to show you what it means to serve sacrificially and thanklessly, like I'm, I'm going to do that. And you've, you've done that in so many ways in mommy that I think has helped pave the way for <clears throat> young life to come in, in a way that's non-threatening to kids and to get to share Jesus. I mean, you paved the way for we had someone kind of before Landon uh, that was working at Maumee, Emily Kerfus, who was around the church for a while and helping out. Um, so yeah, the three of us, Clint, uh, Jason, myself, kind of started brainstorming what would it look like as Jason moved into the role that he's in now and it kind of left a void in, you know, the uh, having a youth pastor at the church. We started brainstorming what would it look like um, to bring someone in that is going to work for the church, um, but also use Young Life as a tool to get to not only, yeah, kind of build, indirectly build the church, but to, to 
be on mission in Maumee. So we started dreaming about this. I don't know what we talked about this for years. I feel like before we felt like we had the candidate and where we're in the position to be able to do it. Um, And we kind of have known for, I mean, in all of our dreaming about what it would look like, we've kind of known it's going to be messy at times. And there's going to be a lot of blurred lines of, well, is this a church thing? Is this a young life thing? Is this a who cares? Kids are hearing about Jesus thing. Um, and so I would say from my perspective, it's kind of been as messy and uh, almost as perfect. <laughs> it's what we've dreamt up um, where we're actually starting to see kids get to hear about Jesus and they're coming back to the church. So we're seeing like the church is being built. That's the neat thing. And yeah, we're saying when we say the church, first prez, you know, in Maumee, but when we talk about this, we're, we mean the big C church is being built and we're not just creating like converts to Christianity, but, but we're actually starting to see people really become disciples of Jesus. And it's going to lead to hopefully their kids and their spouses um, following Jesus later in life. So it's this exponential generational fruit that we're getting to see. So Landon, I think there was a question for you way back when. <laughs> I, I, what was it? Just how, you know, what's, what's your experience been, you know, kind of working both, straddling both lines sometimes. And yeah. Uh, just to give you a, a little bit of context, like I remember as a junior, Jason, you reached out to me and you're like, hey, do you want to get lunch? And I, I had known you from Young Life. I'd seen you at clubs and I'd seen you at Capernaum, especially. Uh-huh. Maybe you were a pastor and you're like, do you want to get lunch and maybe talk about um, like working at First Prez? And I was like, I'd love to get lunch. I don't know if I want to work at First Prez. Um, and we got lunch and we talked and you were like, do you want to be the youth pastor? And I was like, um, it sounds fun. I don't know if that's me though. And I, I basically told you no. Um, and we were friends before that. We were friends after that. Um, like we're still friends, but um, no. Uh, but then, like my senior year of college rolled around, and if I like, if you haven't heard this through the grapevine, or I haven't told you, um, like I'm probably an unlikely candidate to be the guy that's doing the one foot in each side of the pool or blurred lines or however you want to call it because I was a biochem major I was a philosophy minor I was like I had a plan to go to get my PhD and do research and I was like that's what I wanted to do um then the Lord pulled me this direction um and I was really excited because in my mind the partnership was be the youth pastor for first prez and like fulfill the duties to the church and the church family, which is basically spend time with kids. Um, And then it was be a young life leader, help equip college volunteers and organize and do things that I feel like I'm gifted at um, and spend time with kids. I was like, well, yeah, it seems like a no brainer. Like, let's just go spend time with kids and have more resources made available to us. And like, at the time I was kind of kicking around the idea of like, well, I don't know what ministry looks like long-term. Like, could I work for Young Life forever? Maybe. Like, could I go work at a church and be a pastor one day? Maybe. Like, I was interested in seminary. I, like, I'm in seminary now. Um, very, like, mildly, but I am. Um, so it's been, like, it's been challenging at times because I can't be at everything, but it's been so rewarding because, um, like, the weaknesses of one group are almost always made up by the other. Um, So like, at least here, like we in Young Life, like you're a leader, you're in the community, you're being with kids, you're doing things the best way you know how. Um, And like, I can't afford to take six football players out to eat. But because of the resources of the church, I can say, hey guys, do you wanna go grab food? And a couple of them will say, I can pay. And a couple of them will say, I can't. And I can say, I can cover you. Um, and we can go and have a meal and build relationships. And you do that once. And then the next couple of times, kids realize like, oh, we're going to do this. They, you know, they, they order off the appropriate menu or they bring some money or, you know, whatever they do. Um, and I've learned a lot from both groups too. Like 
when you work just with high school kids, if something starts at seven, it really starts at 715. If you're working in the church, if something starts at seven, it starts at 645. Um, and I learned that the hard way at first pres. I was showing up to things at like 655. They started at seven. I'm thinking, oh, I'll get here with like the first, uh, like the kids who are early and then our parents in the parking lot waiting on me. And I'm like, what is this? What's going on? Am I in trouble? Um, so like, I think that's been really fun. And I've learned how to like communicate with parents infinitely better. Um, part of our Young Life training, we read a couple of books and one of the books talks about this group called D4 and D4 comes out of Deuteronomy 4. It's you know, a famous Bible chapter on parenting. And uh, the author's like main takeaway was something like, Kids don't need youth pastors. Kids need adults who know Jesus in their life. And their parents have to be part of that. And they probably do need a youth pastor and they probably need a teacher and they probably need uh, like a grandparent or like someone older than them. And they probably need someone that doesn't look like them. And, you know, I think, I think the, that guy actually said they need like five adults. But anyways, um, in Young Life, we work primarily and sometimes exclusively with kids. And in the church, that's not the case at all. We work with, I get to work with kids and parents and elders and deacons and folks at the church who want to be involved. Um, like Molly Elrod, I hadn't met her because I came on staff at First Pres during COVID. And eventually I sent out an email to some people who said, hey, I'm looking for help with running things. I need some people to help me run junior high, especially. And Molly sent me an email and she said, I'd love to. Um, and Molly's a mother and she's amazing and she brings a like a different insight to things. Um, but I've learned so much from, from people like Molly, from other parents in the church and from how to work with parents. And now when I'm with high school kids, like I feel very safe and confident asking the question like, was your mom gonna pick you up? Can I talk to your mom? And then I can go and build a relationship with the parent. So when the parent knows who you are, when the parent knows what young life is, and it's not just this thing their kids get away to go do, but it's actually a person and an organization investing in their kid. Now the parents invested too. Um, and it's been awesome. So and I think I've I'm I'm getting to draw from the strengths of both young life and the church, and it's been absolutely wonderful.